Okay, today we are going to be beginning our second game project. I call this game project the maze game. And we've got a lot of different opportunities for different variety of things that we can do. So let's just get right at it. First, we're going to import PGZ for Pi Game Zero Run. And this is going to be in charge of starting our application. And the last line of code in our application is pgzrun.go. So that's kind of like our if name equals main business. So we need to make sure that that's at the bottom of our code so that all of our functions are loaded first, okay? Otherwise, if we had functions below that go, it wouldn't get there. It wouldn't, wouldn't load them. All right, I want this to be a pretty big game. So let's use our width variable. Remember, width is a special keyword in Pygame that is used by Pygame to set the window width. And height, I want my height to be um, 600. And I'd like to make a couple of colors, okay? And we know that in Pygame, the color is set by um, the red, green, and blue values. Now, there's plenty of places on the internet that you can go to that help you select RGB values. Uh, so, let, you know, let's just explore those right quick. So RGB value selector, those, those are usually what they what you have to use. Uh, let's see here. Well, another way you can do this is you can actually usually go to like a, a paint program and you can actually just select the color from there and I believe it'll tell you the RGB value. Let me see. I bet I, bet I can. See, let's see. Uh, edit colors. Yeah, so you, you can actually go here and find the one you want, I think. And it'll tell you what the red, green, and blue value is. So that, that's actually built into your, if you have a PC, built into it already uh, that you can do. Remember, they range from like 255 to whatever you want. Uh, from Excuse me, from 0 to 255. And you, you can pick a lot of different options from there. So yeah, here, here's the online version, I think. You know, you got your RGB, so you get to go through here. Oh, this one's pretty convenient, actually. So anyway, I'm going to grab that one. Uh, this is htmlcolorcodes.com. Red color picker. All right. So I'm going to use, um, let's see here, 56, 123, 20, 220. So that was kind of a bluish color. So I'm going to say blue. Now, this is called a tuple. 56. So a tuple in Python is kind of like, um, it's like ordered pair. In this case, there's three of them, so it would be like a, you know, like a ordered triple. But a tuple is anything that's in parentheses, and it's just when you have, you know, multiple numbers. And it kind of comes from mathematics, where you put parentheses around an X and a Y. Uh, next, I want to get a red. Let's get a red color. So um, I think I'll do that. Let's see here. It's interesting that we have two different spectrums of it. Let's see, come down here. Um... That's pretty good. What happens if I go all the way down? Oh, it just goes again. So, let's see. I want kind of a deep red, to tell you the truth. Uh, I'm going to do that 165.99. Nine. And, of course, you could probably find some pre-made colors that people have given names, like, you know, like indigo or chartreuse or whatever, you know. So now this is just going to make our code a little bit easier because now we can um, use these variable names instead of having to type in all these numbers. We want to make something a certain color, okay? So what I'd like to start with is let me just 
bring up something else very quick. I want to start with just making some rectangles today. Let's see if I, oh. So we're going to say draw. Now the draw function is called for every frame. And believe it or not, uh, Pygame will actually start with a completely blank screen every time. That makes the coding really easy. Can cause some flickering, some lag at times like that. Um, but this this is definitely the easy way to go. So we're going to stick with that. And uh, on a really, if you haven't got a good computer, this won't be that big of a problem. Better than this one. All right. So I'm going to say screen.fill, and I'm going to fill my screen with blue. So that code... Uh, you know, if you didn't have this uh, variable, you'd have to say that. And you get that. It's confusing because now there's two different parentheses. Well, this parenthesis here on the outside is, is because every... This is actually a method because it belongs to the screen object. Every method has that parentheses. But then the other parentheses are for the tuple. But we'll just do that. So uh, just briefly, uh, draw is a function. Fill is... A method, the difference between functions and methods are kind of subtle that you'll understand more later. Uh, but methods you call on an object. Now, you'll see we don't have screen defined. It's it's created for us. If you look at your variable list, you'll see that there is a, over here, a screen object right here that's made for us. And, and it has to be made for us or else there wouldn't be any screen at all to be shown. Let's make a couple rectangles. I'm going to call this rect1. And the, a rectangle is an object, and it's made with the class. Uh, if you scroll up towards the top, I think there is a, a rectangle class in there. So we, we definitely have a, a rect class here we can use. Not really sure what the Z rect is. I haven't explored that one yet. But rect, so you just say the name of the class, and then we're going to put in uh, the, the rect takes... Uh, four parameters. It takes the uh, where you want the upper left-hand corner to be in an X and a Y coordinate, comma, how wide um, and how tall. So I'm going to put this rectangle at 200, comma, 200, and you don't put them in parentheses like you do other X, Y points. You just say 200, 200. I'm going to make this rectangle... Um, I'm going to make it 200 wide and 25 tall. So you, you're just telling it, um, you know, it, when you, when you make the rectangle, you're, you're the first two numbers here. So I said 200 comma 200. Th th those are the numbers for this X, Y location. And then how wide it is was also 200. And then I made it 25 this way. All right. Now, nothing's going to happen. I've made a rectangle, and we don't always want to draw rectangles. We use rectangles to bound off things that we don't necessarily want people to see. Uh, but we want to see this one. So we're going to say screen.draw.rect. And it takes the rect, the draw rect function takes two parameters it takes a rectangle and a color that you want. So you you don't notice we never said what color to make rect one. So I'm going to say rect one uh, red. And uh, we should be able to run our program and, and, and see what we've created. Uh, I haven't saved mine yet, so we're going to save it as uh, alien maze runner. Alien maze runner. All right, so I've I've made my rectangle. Uh, notice it's not colored in, right? It's not colored in. Uh, I'm going to color it in though. Uh, you you also I believe you can you can make it um, 
transparent as well. I, I don't really remember how at the moment, but I, I know it can be done. But I'm going to now make another rectangle. So I'll say rect2 rectangle. And let's do, um, we'll put this one at 500, comma 100, and it'll be 50 wide and 200 tall. But this one I'm going to draw using the filled rect method. So now I've got a couple of rectangles, one filled in, one not. So we're going to use these rectangles to make boundaries and edges that make a maze that we have to have a, a character traverse through. Now when doing that, one of the things that can be really helpful is to be able to find the X, Y locations as you map this out. So one of the things that I like to do, we won't be using the mouse. You certainly could if you wanted to add that implementation. But when I'm doing something like this, I like to go ahead and say, let's add this function on mouse down, this um, function here, that just prints out the position. And so now I, when I'm running this this program and, and I'm plotting out, well, where do I want to have my rectangles appear? I can click and say, well, I want it right there. And I can get that X, Y coordinate right there so I know it. And that kind of that kind of helps. And we went over printing that in the last lesson. So nice little review there. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I, I want to make more walls. And we don't want to sit there and list every single one of these walls here. We need to think of a better way to do this. So it's time for us to review lists. So down here in the interactive shell, let's practice just for a second with lists. So um, say I have a list called uh, W. An empty list is made like that with an open, closed, square bracket. I can add things to my list with the word, uh, with the method append. And then I can say stuff like hi. You know, what's up? That's gross. And as I do so, I keep adding new things to it, making it um, bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And I can also loop through my list with the commands. I can do a little loop here. I'm going to say for... Um, word in w and i can say print word and what that's going to do is word is going to be every element in that list one at a time alternatively the other way and and this is a more general way of doing this we have to do it this way sometimes like especially if you're going to remove i can say for i in range length of the word list print w bracket i. So the way that works is when I have a list, so w, w is a list. Let me, let me show that again. W is a list. If I want like to print what's up, I say w bracket one and it, it finds this, the first, the first thing is called zero. That's called one. The third, that's two, so it starts at zero, zero, one, two. So if I wanted the first thing, I'd actually say W bracket zero. Okay, so that's how, that's how lists work. 
Well, that's what we're going to use. We're going to use a list. So let's get rid of this right now. We don't need that anymore. Let's make a couple more variables that we can use. Um, I want to make thick for thickness. So I want all my walls to have a certain thickness of 10. And we're going to make a method called, oh wait, not quite, not, not ready yet. Hold on. Um, and I'm going to make a list, walls. And we're going to make a new function called make walls. And we're just, this function here, it, we're only going to call it once at the very beginning of the program. We're just going to call this to, to make our walls for us. Um, basically, it's just going to fill this list up. Yes, I could write all this code right here on the outside, but we want to minimize the amount of things that we do outside of function. Functions keep your code organized and easy to read. You know, um, they also allow you to do things like program trees and things like that. More on that later. But <clears throat> here we are on make walls. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create rectangles and append them. All right. So I could say R1 for is a rectangle. And I'm just going to border my screen. So I'm going to start in 0, 0. I'm going to have a length of the width of this of our program and a height of thickness. Oh, which was lowercase. Then I'm going to take my walls list and append it. And so now we've got one wall in our list. Let's make another wall. This time, I'm going to make this wall go down. So it'll have a width of thickness and a height of the height of the screen. In case you're wondering, you actually can combine these two lines of code here into one. You can take this and put it inside the parentheses. So we could say, instead of that, we could say just that. But I don't want to do too much of that because that then you start having lots and lots of parentheses. When you're creating objects inside of other function calls and method calls, it can be a little confusing. So we'll just stick with that for right now. All right, let's make another rectangle. This time I'm going to I'm going to do it on the far right wall. So I'm going to take the width of the game. I'm going to subtract from the width the thickness of my wall. So I'm putting it in an x coordinate that's not all the way next to the end of the screen cuz then I wouldn't see it. I'm going to back off to the left because the rectangle, the rectangle, when you give it an XY coordinate, remember, you're giving it the top left. So if I was to give it the top left way over here on the side of the screen, I, I wouldn't actually see it. So I'm going to back up a little bit, back up thickness, and then I will, you know, the Y coordinate zero, thickness of thickness, and the height of the screen. And I'll pin it. All right, uh, let's make another wall. Let's make two more. Ideally, in a finished game, we would have lots of walls that interconnect and make chambers and things like that for us to explore. So the same kind of idea, the height, 
uh, would be at the very bottom of the screen. Remember, uh, zero, zero is the top corner of your screen, and the Ys increase. So it's actually, this is actually conventional graphics, a little bit different than algebra class. So I'm going to back up the thickness from the height of the screen. And I will have a width of width and a thickness of how thick my wall is supposed to be. And then we'll append it. And I'm just going to make one more wall kind of in the center just so we can get an idea of how this works. So R5. Uh, I want this one to be at coordinates 400 comma 200, and I'll have it. I'll make this a vertical wall, so it'll be uh, its width will be thickness and its height 400. All right. So the only purpose of this make walls function is simply to fill up our list. We could have taken all this code and put it here, but like in after line seven, uh, but then it, is, it gets difficult to organize your code that way. Uh, but here's the deal. We need to make sure we call it, and I want to call it and load up this list before pgzrun.go. So what we're going to do is we're just going to say make walls so that when you run this module, it's going to make the walls first. Okay, let's try it. Oh, you know what? Nothing's going to happen whatsoever because we did not go to draw and print our, and, and, and we didn't draw our, our rectangles. So we're ready to draw our rectangles. If you remember earlier, uh, we, I, we talked about how you can iterate through a list. So, uh, for example... I have a list right now of walls. I've, I just ran the code, so I've got it. There's my list. You'll notice it's a bunch of rectangles. It's got their, uh, the variable names have been replaced with the numbers, 10 for width and all that. Well, I can do something like this. I can say 4W in walls. Now, I don't want to print it. I want to draw it. But you can see that it's going to go through one at a time, all my walls. And it's, it's that kind of thing that I want to use here. I'm going to say for wall in walls. And just like down here when I, when I did it in the interactive shell, W is going to become, ev W became every wall in my list. Wall is going to be every wall in my list of walls. And I'm simply going to use the screen dot draw filled rect command. And I want to draw it raw. I want to draw a wall red. So one at a time, each wall in walls will become this wall right here. And it will be colored red. That gives us this. Now it is time for us to put a character in our maze. Let's do it. Okay, in our last lesson, we uh, we explored some pretty cool stuff from Kinney. So uh, what I want you to do is to go and pick something that you want to use for your um, hero. I'm going to be using another alien. Uh, I'll be using the blue alien today. Uh, feel free to download it if you want, or you can draw your own. And also, if you've never been to Piskel, Piskel is a wonderful site that allows you to make your own sprites. So I am going to use alien blue. Now, a little word of caution here. Uh, Pi Game Zero does not allow you to use capital letters in image names. It does that so that it's platform independent because some don't allow it. So we're going to have to make sure we spell that without the capital B. So I just copy that image that I've chosen from that pack I downloaded. And I'm going to go in here to my maze game. And um, you'll see I've already got some aliens in there. But 
that's because I, you know, I practice sometimes. If time allows, before I just jump into showing y'all how to do this. All right, so I'm going to call this just alien because I need to have it no capital letters. And the problem with this alien is it's, it's pretty big. So um, it depends. If you're working with a Macintosh, you may want to use um, a program you download off the Internet. I'm sure there's one on the Mac. I just don't know what it is right now. Um, but I'm going to change the size of this. And I'm not sure what the easiest way to do this is, but I'm going to use Paint 3D. Now, if you choose to just edit, the problem with edit is you'll be editing it with Paint. And Microsoft Paint removes transparent background. So we're going to say Edit Paint 3D, which I have yet to figure out what this program is doing because it's such a confusing program. But it's good for sizing things, right? Um, so if you click on Canvas right here, I'm not even going to mess with this color. I'm just The only thing I'm is resizing it. Uh, you have an option of pixels or percent. I'm just going to use percent lock aspect ratio. You type in 50. Um, and it just automatically shrinks it, and then you can just hit the X and save on exit, and you're, you should be good to go. And there it is. He's, he's shrunk. All right, so the alien is an actor. So I'm going to – he's going to be my hero, so I'm going to call him hero. Actor. And you put the name of your picture without the .png. And then you, you can – put an optional starting XY location. I'm going to put 50-50 for my X and Y. And, and they have to be a tuple. They have to be in parentheses. Uh, you know, I, I don't know why sometimes they have to be in parentheses, sometimes they don't. You know, when you make a rectangle, you don't have to put parentheses around it. Uh, you actually can. It, it supports it. <laughs> but um, with the alien, you, you do have to put them in parentheses to, to tell it that it's an X lo Y location. <clears throat> All right. So in order to see our alien, though, we will have to draw our alien. Uh, I'm going to draw my alien after I draw my walls because, I don't know, then I can see my alien on top of my wall if I ever wanted to, I guess. So that is, you just say hero.draw. And now we have an alien in our world. Now, I have a blue alien on a blue background, so I, <laughs> I might end up changing my background to something else. Um, I do like the blue alien. He's got three eyes, which I think is pretty awesome. So I'm going to stick with that. Now it's, it's time to make this alien start moving. So we're going to need to write a... We're going to have to use our keyboard. So that is def on key press, and it takes in a key variable. You know what? I don't want on key press. I want on key... That's something different. I'm sorry. Let's do on key down. On key down. And we're going to say if the key equals. Now, keys is an object or a module. I can't remember. It's either a module or an object. It's preloaded for us. If you look at your variables here, uh, it's down here. Keys. Uh, oh, it's in enum. Okay. Well, that's not something I want to get into too much. But anyway, it's a preloaded Thing. So you say keys dot left. So it's usually in all caps like that. Keys dot right. Keys dot up. Keys dot down. If you want, um, I think it's if you if you're one of those WASD people, I think it's I think it's that. Let me know if it's a capital or a lowercase. Probably both the work. Um, but I think it's capital W. But I'm going to use the arrow key. So keys dot left makes my X coordinate changed by five of my hero. L if key is equal to, I'm sorry, this should be keys dot left, keys dot right. 
we're going to move them to the right. Elif key is equal to keys dot up. Notice that I'm using two equal signs when I ask if, if the key they pressed is equal to the what's defined as the right key on the keyboard. Two equal signs is for saying if two things are equal. One equal sign is when you assign it. So when I assign 10 to thick, that was not me asking if thick equals 10. That was me setting thick to 10. This is me asking, hey, Python, the key, because whatever key they press, that key's the code. Each key has a certain code in your on your computer. That code goes right there in the key. And then we're asking, does that key code that you sent me, does it equal the code for left? I could actually, instead of keys to left, I could type in the key code for it. It's, you know, whatever it is. I don't know. I don't want to look it up. It's better to use. That's what enums do. Anyway, if you press up, I'm going to make my Y decrease by 5. Remember, the Y values uh, increase going down. Um, L if, if the key is equal to the enum keys dot down. I'll say hero dot Y plus equals 5 because that's how that happens. We now should be able to move our little alien around the screen. Oh, I have invalid syntax. Oh, because I only have one equal sign there. What? I talked all that and I still made the mistake. Two equal signs, two equal signs, y'all. All right. And as the kids say though, you have to spam the, the key. And our alien is able to fly through walls. And we're going to end this lesson by preventing him from flying through walls after he flies through walls this one time. Yay, there he goes. Because why? Well, the Python doesn't know that these walls are anything but background, right? It doesn't know that we don't want our alien flying through the wall. So how are we going to prevent that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to make it to where, like, if somebody tried to walk, if the alien tries to walk through the wall, we're actually going to let him walk through the wall. But then we're going to say, are you in the wall? If you're in the wall, then whatever move you just make, undo. Keep in mind that the alien is only drawn once per frame. I can move the alien left and right in and out of these walls a hundred times in between a frame draw. As long as I don't draw him over the frame, it's not it's not going to be that way to my users. The game players are, are going to assume that I never went into it. So that's how we're going to hand, <coughs> handle it. We're going to let the user move into the wall. Then if they, then we're going to detect they moved in the wall, and we're going to put them back. So watch how we do that. All we do is we make a local variable x equal to the hero's x coordinate, make a local variable y equal to their y. Then we let the hero move, and we ask this very simple question. We say... For wall and walls, remember that's going to loop through all our walls. If our hero is colliding, and it's C-O-L-L-I-D-E, -L 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 rect, all one word, colliding with a rectangle with a wall, then we're going to reset the hero's X and Y back to what it used to be. And that's it. So in our next lesson, we'll fix the motion to make it better so where it's nice and smooth. We'll look at several different ways to do that. We'll even make a, a maze that is on ice.